जियोबाइट वेलकम टू जियोबाइट थर्ड वन टेरिडोफाइट्स लेट अस सी व्हाट आर द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर्स ऑफ टेरिडोफाइट्स द हैबिटेट ऑफ टेरिडोफाइट्स इज द कोल डैम्प एंड शेडी प्लेस सेम लाइक द एल्गे एज वेल एज द ब्रायोफाइट्स now the common uh, plants and or pteridophytes are nothing but horse tails and ferns now where are these pteridophytes used many pteridophytes are used for soil purposes and for so for uh, medicinal purposes and as soil binders and also often we see ferns being grown as the ornamental plants so those are the uses which we find uh, under pteridophytes and coming to the reproduction so under reproduction we should see the main plant body so the main plant body in case of bryophytes was a gametophytic phase in case of pteridophytes the main plant body is a sporophytic phase now what happens here uh, so, so, so the body is going to be um, have a sporophyll a sporophyll is like leaf like structure now one thing you have to remember in case of bryophyte the gametophytic phase or the sporophytic phase of the entire thing was more or less a thalloid structure but in case of pteridophyte the sporophytic phase is well differentiated whereas the gametophytic phase is thalloid so what does it mean when i say sporophyte is well differentiated sporophyte is going to have stem leaves roots and the true vascular tissues now this is the most important point here what are vascular tissues we will study this in detail but for now we say phloem and xylem are the two important vascular tissues in plants so we observe these in higher plants Now, when we are talking about algae, bryophyte, pteridophyte, these are the lower plants. That is, evolution happened to higher plants. So we call these as the lower plants in the plant kingdom. Now, from algae to bryophyte to pteridophyte, the, for the first time we have seen vascular tissues. So, bryophytes are the first terrestrial plants where we saw vascular tissues. What are vascular tissues? Phloem and xylem. What are phloem and xylem? We will study in detail in future further chapters. So coming back to sporophyte. Sporophyte is well differentiated, so it's having the true roots, stems, leaves, and vascular tissues. Now this sporophyte has leaves which are called as sporophyll. Now these sporophylls can be large in size. or tiny in size so they will be called as microsporophylls and megasporophylls so you have different plants with uh, different sizes of leaves now this sporophyll uh, is going to look something like this a leaf like structure underneath this sporophyll we have sporangia so if this is the leaf below this you can see sporangia uh, attached to the sporophyll so this sporangia ultimately will produce spores through meiosis meiosis is the reductive cell division so the sporangia present below the sporophyll in sporophytes is going to produce spores after meiosis now this spores will germinate and they will produce the next phase that is the gametophytic phase what is this called as prothallus because it is thalloid okay it is photosynthetic of course all plants are photosynthetic now this prothallus is going to bear the male and female sex organs in sporophyte there are no sex organs whereas in the gametophytic phase we have sex organs antheridium and archegonium once the fertilization happens to produce zygote this zygote will again lead to the production of a sporophyte so this cycle keeps on going continuously when i say spores these spores can be of similar kind or of a different
dissimilar kind. When they are of a similar kind, they are called as homospores. When they are of a dissimilar kind, they are heterospores. What does dissimilar kind mean? That one is of a micro size, small size, that's a microspore. Bigger size, that's a megaspore. Now these spores will further germinate into a male gametophyte. So the microspore is going to give rise to a male gametophyte. Whereas the megaspore is going to give rise to a female gametocyte. So we have micro gamet uh, male gametocyte and female gametocyte being produced from the heterospores. There are two important things to be remembered in bryophytes. Pteridophytes that is the female gametophyte which is produced from the megaspore is going to be retained in the parent sporophyte. So this is the parent sporophyte which is producing this spore. From here we get female gametophyte. So this female gametophyte is retained with the parent itself. Also after uh, fertilization the zygote which is produced and which develops this entire thing happens within these female gametophytes. So this is something which is closer to our, what we see now in the higher plants that is fertilization happening in the female part and seeds being produced in the female part. So when you study about angiosperms and the higher plants you will understand what actually I am talking about. So uh, to tell now briefly, so we see that zygote being developed inside female gametophyte that is ultimately going to produce again our sporophytic phase. So this development of zygote within the female gametophy gametophyte, so this is gametophyte. So inside the female gametophyte we see that the zygote is being developed. So this is something which is precursor to the seed habit which we see in higher plants. So this is where two things have started. One is the vascular tissues being the true vascular tissues and also the development of zygote within the female gametophyte. Also uh, there is a classification of pteridophytes further into four different classes. What are they? Psylopsida. Lycopsida, Sphenopsida and Pleuropsida. So these are different classes. The classification will be done based on what we have taught. So that is a higher level. All you have to know is what are the different classes into which pteridophytes are further classified. So this is all about the general characters of pteridophytes. And the next topic would be angiosperm, the, the gymnosperms and later on angiosperms. Thank you for watching. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to Geobyte. Geobyte.